Someone asked me, Harley, you look like a Tour de France doper. Surely you got the doper cheeks going on there. Surely you know something about doping in sport. What's the deal? What's the deal? You're wearing the Odyssey jersey. What's the deal, Harley? This is a jersey I got when I was used to race in Belgium. I bought this on the bike shop in 2003. And I left more of an athlete jersey back in the marketplace. So doping in sport, man. People ask me all the time. Everyone dopes, man. People ask me what's the deal, like, did such and such dope, like, how do they win? <laughs> like, man, <laughs> everybody at the top is fucking doping. It's business, man, 100%. There's no way you can ride your bike that fast, swim that fast, run that fast, throw the discus that far, javelin, whatever. If it's money and fame involved, it's doping hardcore, 100%. Any... This is how it is. And I want to make a disclaimer is I don't think people are bad for doping. I don't think, oh, like if you get caught for doping, you're you know, scum. I don't think that at all because that's just business as usual. Everyone knows what's going on. We athletes do anyway. Coaches do. The spectators don't most of the time. So no one's cheating. No one's cheating at all. They're cheating their health. Definitely. Cheating their health. There's a lot of risks of doping. But no one's cheating, man. It's a fucking even playing field. So what I find amusing is when people go, oh, the... You know, such and such got busted for doping, or oh, what a scumbag. And it's like, man, everyone's on the gear. No one's cheating, man. Everyone's on the same page. <laughs> They're on the same page. This team was on the same page. This team, the sponsor pulled out. Like, how many teams have been like pulled out from sponsorships in the last five years from doping in cycling? I can pick up a cycling magazine from five years ago and probably 95% of big names have been busted or severely implicated in uh, doping scandals. And again, it's not just cycling. People often say, oh, it's cycling, you dope it. And it's like, you look like a doper, Harley. The reality is, man, in all sports, swimming is like rife with doping. Tennis. I mean, the reality is cycling can have an epitestosterone, testosterone level of about 2 to 1. Normal levels about 1.3 to ratio to 1. Tennis is about four to one. The IOC epi testosterone and testosterone levels is six to one. <laughs> six to one. Cycling is you gotta have all that before you test positive. Tennis is up here, IOC, urine test, boom. The IOC doesn't even do blood testing, they just do urine testing. So in cycling, we are very I don't know what's going on there, but I don't know if it's conspiracy theory or whatever, but it is the big oil coming in to try and snuff out cycling because cycling is growing so much in the community. People are riding their bike to work and I used to work in the bike industry from 2003 onwards and uh, I sold so many bicycles because of Lance Armstrong. And people would come in and go, well, what does Lance ride? I want that bike or I want the, you know, the base model of that bike. And they'd come in and they'd start, start riding to work and they're losing weight and they're getting healthy and they're watching Lance in July on the TV. And I thought it was fantastic. And I don't know what's all, I know, and I know what's all going on in racing, man, because that's just how it is. But I thought it was great. People, Lance was inspiring people. So when Lance got put to trial uh, recently, I was like, what a, what a waste of money! I was like, what a waste of money! Why can't we spend that money in planting organic fruit gardens? Who cares if Lance is a doper, man? That's just how it is in that level, man. Who cares if Lance is a doper? If he got busted, it's not like no one else is doing it. Everyone's fucking on it at that level. <laughs> this is how it is. It's just how it is. So like. For someone to get caught, it wouldn't be, it's no surprise to me. It's no disappointment. It's no surprise at all. It's no disappointment, no surprise at all because it's just how it is. It's just like someone going, we found a camera and we, we searched the camera and there was photos on it. <gasps> it's like, it's a camera. There's going to be photos on it. Of course. It's like we tested a professional athlete and they tested positive for testosterone, amphetamines, HGH, you know, Sarah, all these things. <gasps> it's like, it's just how it is, man. It's just how it is. It's just how it is, man. I mean, there's doping products like, you know, the Ventolin puff or the Salbutamol. That's illegal unless you've got a script. You can lose your contract if you test positive. But if you get your doctor to say this patient has asthma, it's legal. Same with, like, a pseudoephedrine and caffeine. They used to be banned to a certain level. Now, whatever. So I don't support the use of drugs. But I understand that's just how it is. Because you've got people in... America or Australia or Kenya and they want to get money and they want to get the fame and they've got a bit of talent and they go to these they go to the races and they're like wow there's, there's, a, there's such a big gap here what's going on here and the coaches say well you know what do you want to do what do you want to do and I'm not going to name any names but I've 
talk with some of the best coaches in the world, the best riders in the world, and that's just how it is. And on my personal experience with racing in Belgium in 2003 was that's just how it is. And if you don't like it, fuck off then. That's just, that's just the reality. It's business as usual. If you're a farmer and you can't produce X, Y, Z amount of corn or whatever, no one's going to say, oh, you know, just bad. They're going to say, put get the fucking chemicals on there. Get the pharmaceutical to help the farm. Get it going, you know. They don't give a fuck. That's just the world we live in. It's cut. We live in a cutthroat world, man. We live in a world where 27,000 people die every day under age five just from starvation. They don't have enough money to eat, so they die. 27,000 people. And people are surprised when an athlete from Kenya or America or whatever tests positive for a drug. And then <laughs> and people say, the marathoners don't dope. But no one dopes the New York Marathon. I'll tell you what, mate. Fucking everyone's doping. When there's a million bucks in the table... <laughs> and your national income's a thousand bucks a year, and there's a million dollars, you can reach it and grab it. So anyone to say that, oh, it's bad that they just, you know, that's, oh, it's bad that they cheat, it's immoral, it's bullshit, man. That's just how it is. That's what people do when you're forced, man. When you risk death or your family risks death or whatever, you do things you wouldn't normally do. And that's the reality for a lot of athletes and a lot of nations where the money situation is in dire straits. In Australia, it's more ego to be a good athlete, but... In a lot of countries around the world, it's like a matter of survival. It's a matter of, you know, working 15 hours a day for the next fucking 80 years until you die, picking corn or becoming that professional runner, swimmer or whatever, and getting that contract and feeding your whole family and village. That's the reality of the situation. And the kings of doping would be America, Australia, where else? I reckon America and Australia would be the kings of doping. I don't think anyone's... It's Italy. Yeah, a lot of good doctors coming out of Italy. So, yeah, probably Italy... Italy, the doctors are really good, but the, the products, Australia and America, kings of doping, definitely. we we got the best gear, definitely. And again, I'm not saying it's a healthy thing to do, I'm just saying that's just the fucking reality. And people can write comments and say, that's not true, Harley, I believe in miracles. It's like, all right, <laughs> whatever. And like I say, man, just because someone dopes doesn't make them a bad person. That's just a choice if you want to be a professional athlete. The difference between being a pro and an amateur is dope. That's just fucking how it is, man. That's just how it is. If you want to make the next level, be prepared to get a good doctor because that's what you're going to need to do. If you want to win big races and get the money, you got to get a good doctor. And I'm not supporting that. I'm just saying that's just how it is in my personal experience. I remember having a conversation with a fellow rider in A grade, did one. He was saying, oh, you know, it's fucked how such and such got caught doping. That's fucked up. And I'm like, dude, you're doping as well, man, at, at a relative level. You're taking caffeine pills, you're taking pseudoephedrine, you're taking uh, salbutamol, the asthma puffer, you're doping at a relevant level, man. You're winning local races on the gear, and they're winning local, ra they're winning pro races on the gear. It's just, it's just doping products, man. It's performance-enhancing drugs, PEDs, PEDs. That's just how it is. So that's why I always find it funny when people are drinking coffee at work, and they're clicking on the internet on cyclingnews.com or whatever, and they're going, oh, such and such got busted, what a cheat, and they're drinking coffee so they can work, be more productive at work, and... Let's get through these fucking papers now, shall we? You know, or the truck driver who's driving all night long, popping pills to stay awake to drive, and then they hear about the swimmer gets busted and say, oh, hypocrite. That's just how it is. Drugs are part of society. Drugs are just part of society. Coffee, alcohol, painkillers, asthma puffers, you know, steroids, Viagra. Drugs are a part of society. They always will be, always have been. Personally, I haven't had a cup of coffee since 1999. I'm not saying I'm better than anyone, I'm just saying that if I got on the juice, man, I could fucking dominate fucking oath. And I can I can hook up I can hook up testosterone, I can hook up EPO, I've got the money, I've got the contacts, but I don't want to do it because I know that there's definitely risks involved and it's just not worth it, man. It ain't for me it ain't worth sacrificing my health for a bit of extra fame and cash, man. It's just it ain't worth it for me. So I'd rather just race at my little, you know, level and have fun with my mates and stay fit and healthy for life. And because it's a fucking cutthroat sport. Professional sport is cutthroat. If you can't toe the line, if you can't deliver a professional sport, no one gives a fuck about your integrity or how nice a person you are. They're like, get the fuck out of here. We'll get someone else. In cycling, if you look at the UCI list, it's like a thousand riders deep. So if you can't perform, the team will just fuck you off and get someone else. You're a disposable unit. You're just a production unit. You're not that cow in that fucking factory, man. That's all you are. You're not that sheep on that organic farm. You're just a money item. You're disposable. They'll chew you up and spit you out. They don't give a fuck about you. 
It's this cutthroat. It's the cutthroat world we live in. That's just how it is. So I don't mean to be a downer. I just want to put it out there that the reality of drugs and sport is 100% all the fucking top names are fucking doping through the eyeballs. And they're not cheats because everyone else is doing it. Everyone else is cutting the corner, man. It's not like just one person goes here and everyone goes straight. Everyone is going that way. Everybody at that level is going on that way. 100%. No doubt about it. I even see it in the paleo primal diet industry. I see people writing books who are 60 years old and obviously doing some sort of human growth hormone, testosterone, whatever, because they've got like, you know, bitch tits going on. And, you know, you look at their photos like six months ago and they're like sort of slim. And then six months later, they're like, Pow! puffed right out. And they're like, 60 years old. <laughs> That's a bit suspicious, isn't it? So I'll see people in the, you know, in the health industry uh, writing books about you know how their supplements the best ever. It's very uh, youthening, and they've had plastic surgery on their face, which is fine. You know, it's nothing personal set. But if you're going to promote a product and you say that's why I look this way, but you've had plastic surgery, which is quite obvious, and you're saying your probiotics or or your sauerkraut recipe is the reason why your face looks like that at 65, it's like, well, you've had plastic surgery, obviously. You know, you had that nip and tuck, which is fine. But we live in a world where people are so naive and dumb. So next time you turn the TV on at the Olympics coming up and you see that gold medalist, you can guarantee 1,000% drugs got them where they are today. Hard training, dedication, bit of talent, bit of genetics. At the end of the day, drugs is the foundation. Without that, you're next. See, you're, there's 1,000 people will take your spot. 1,000 people will take your spot. Doping gives the athlete the certainty they need to perform at the sponsor's level. That's just how it is. Post your comments down below, controversial video. I don't support doping, I'm just saying that's just how it is. Post your comments and thoughts down below. If you want to learn more about our cult, hit subscribe here. Peace. Thanks for watching.